All right, we're going to look at doing a build on a Wildman 4-inch Punisher. We're going to start from the nose cone down, working with a CTI injected nose cone with a phenolic tip. This also is threaded, which will thread into the forged eye hook at the top. The nose cone itself has a stop in the bottom. Kind of can't really see it in the video, but it's towards the bottom here. It actually gets stopped on the washer that's included with the kit. You can make this tip permanent by simply installing it, threading in the forged eye hook in the rear, and gluing it in place. Or you can fashion a tool, something out of half-inch PVC or dowel rod or something else. We can actually use it to twist in place using lock washers as well. On this particular kit, I may opt for just making it permanent. I will need to attach the recovery cord to the top before I actually glue that into the tip of the nose cone though. Once we're done with the nose tip, we're going to have to square the switch band that was included. Also going to have to square and clean up the coupler. There's a couple of spots just need to get cleaned up on the outside. One little spot here that we'll sand off with a bar sander or by hand, clean up some loose threads and get a look at where this is going to land in comparison to the nose cone and also where the avionics bay plates are going to start and stop and I've opted to use the 3D printed avionics slit on this particular build which will hold two RRC2 plus altimeters I need to see where those are going to land in conjunction with the switch band and how everything's going to line up. So we'll show that later in the build. One of the first things we need to do on this build is sand the front of this nose cone, get everything cleaned up a little bit and sanded on the outside. Also clean up the tip a little bit, just using like 120 grit or 150 grit. You don't really need to scuff the inside unless you're going to make it permanent, which I may do. Not 100% sure yet. Just going to scuff this up a little bit, clean up, remove any burrs from the outside. Also, you can kind of see where I've already pre-scuffed the seam on the nose cone. There's a little bit of a ridge here that you can take off with either an X-Acto knife or just file it off. So you can see I kind of sanded this down. Take away some of the sheen. And from there, I'll just use body filler or something of that nature to fill that in, prime it, and paint it. Same goes for the nose cone tip itself. These may have some manufacturing ridges, little marks on there. No big deal. I'll kind of just sand some of those down, give this a scuff, and prime this. You know, prepare this for paint and primer. You can do that all now, or you can permanently install it like I may. You're going to get a lot of the sanding work and prep work will probably be done off camera, but you get the idea of just taking the sheen off of it. I may go in there and take the sheen out of the inside as well. From there, we'll Square up the switch band, get that all sanded. Take that small part off as well. Get this cleaned up and sanded, and also fit this to the shoulder of the nose cone. Right now it's a little bit of a tight fit, but we'll take a little bit of material off the coupler, mark where the nose cone ends, and that will give us an idea of where to glue the switch band on. To remove the ridge, from the switch band as well as the coupler or any other parts that may have this little ridge on there. I like to just take sanding block and it squares that up. Same thing with the coupler, just taking this at an angle, get 
doesn't take much. Just squares that little portion off. If there's any loose fibers on the tube on the inside, just sanding those off with 120 or 150. And also scuff the outside of the coupler, especially at the front. Coupler fit to the cone, it's a bit tight. What I'll do is mark on the coupler where it lands. So I can see where the nose cone goes and also the area where the switch band would get glued below that. Before we glue the switch band on, we're going to thoroughly scuff the outside of this coupler from where the switch band is going to sit and the top of the nose cone shoulder where this part is going to go inside the nose cone. It's a little bit too big currently. We're going to take some material off the outside of this and thoroughly scuff where the switch band is going to get glued and also take some material off of this portion as well. We're going to need to get this thoroughly scuffed up around the entire circumference of the top of the coupler tube. The switch band has now been glued in place. Couldn't really show the filming of that. Don't have enough hands. But once the switch band was glued in place with regular West systems, I cleaned up the epoxy on the top as well as the bottom. I drilled three 3 16 wide holes to vent out the bay. And I believe the switches are going to end up being put below the switch band, which is not ideal, but it'll still have enough room. A few items of note when it comes to avionics bays in general. There's a hundred different ways of doing an avionics bay, especially one with a lot of room left in it. It's four inch in diameter. You can put as many altimeters in here as you want. I did install two switch bays which lead to the Schurter 110, 120 volt switching switches. You can do an avionics bay however you'd like. I decided to use the Missile Works 3D printed sled to make things nice and easy. Again, you can build a bay to your preference. There's really no right or wrong way of doing it. We do suggest redundant charges, two drogue charges, two main charges two altimeters, two separate batteries, and two separate switches. Full redundancy all around. On the top side of the avionics bay, this is the main side, so there'll be two main charges. If you're putting them on the top of the av bay, that's one option, or you can run the charges directly to the tip of the nose cone and have it blow downward. Again, whatever way you go with, ground test it to make sure it's functional. Additionally, with the nose cone, you're going to want to drill a vent hole 10 inches down from the tip in order to vent the cone. And the fit of the cone onto the coupler tube should be snug, not overly tight, not overly loose, relatively snug. 
If it's not, I would suggest sanding down the exterior of the coupler a little bit more. Last item of note with the nose cone. The phenolic tip is removable. It is threaded for a quarter twenty thread and the hardware is included with the kit. If you want to make the tip removable, you can. This can come in and out. For my purposes, I may just glue the tip in, but I would need to attach my recovery harness to the eye bolt before I actually glue the assembly in the base of the nose cone. Another item of mention, since this is dual deploy, here's the drogue section, which is downward facing toward the fins. The upper with the nose cone, I would suggest shear pinning on the nose cone with at least two 256 shear pins. If you want to use three or four, that's fine. Again, just ground test your setup as it would fly with the parachute packed to ground test it correctly. As you're drilling shear pin holes, vent holes, things of that nature as well, from the nose cone side and the drogue side, if you want to put little indexing marks where you're basically drilling half moon size holes between where the booster tube meets the switch band and where the nose cone meets the switch band. You can see I have a shear pin installed here. I have an index mark here and an index mark here that I made with a 3 16 drill bit just to mark where the tubes line up. I'll now drill the shear pin holes in the booster section as well.